Snapchat, I was watching an interview with the Magic Leap co-founders last night and it kind of blew me away. This company is a lot of hype, but if they live up to the hype, holy fuck things are going to change. Magic Leap is a stealth company that started in 2010. Uh, they're based out of Florida of all places. They have $1.4 billion in funding. They're completely stealth and secretive and they have 600 employees. What they're working on is augmented reality stack, which is different to virtual reality and things like uh, the Oculus Rift where it completely covers your vision. This is augmented reality with like holograms and overlays on the real world. There's a few companies right now like Meta and uh, Microsoft HoloLens that have products that they've actually shown and demoed and you can kind of buy which do this, but they're very bulky and they have to be tethered to a computer. And we all remember Google Glass, which was uh, Google's uh, developer kind of concept, um, which had a little prism off the side. They looked very futuristic and weird. Um, people called glass holes. And it was more of just a notification window. So I've been yapping on for years about augmented reality daily wear glasses. Sunglasses that kind of look no different to normal Ray-Bans. People wouldn't notice that they'd have a camera in them and you'd be seeing overlays on your world. Magic Leap hasn't publicly released the product they're developing, but I really hope it's something like this. I really hope it's, it's something you wear every day, the battery lasts for hours, and they just look like normal glasses. And there's a chance that this might be what they're actually planning to release, because there's hints of this in the interviews and the words they use. Uh, they said that uh, because they're using the eye system, the brain, to generate these images, they don't need much computational power. Because of that, they can have a small form factor, um, meaning you know, lightweight glasses that are portable, and you'll want to actually wear them every day. They're having their employees wear them every day now. The major investors are Google and Alibaba, so you can see they've got a lot of learnings from Glass, um, and they're going definitely down the consumer kind of commerce, e-commerce method, AR e-commerce. The really cool thing you mentioned in the interview is that they bought a massive production facility that used to be used by Motorola, um, and they're starting debugging their production line this summer, so basically now. He referenced that they're basically trying to become like what Apple did for iPods. You know how it went like, you know, big clunky iPod, and then each generation you're really excited, and then you got to the iPhone. They're trying to do that with AR glasses. The common kind of like futurist tech thought predictions and stuff like that has been that AR is maybe five, ten years away because we'll have VR hit the mainstream first because that's a much easier thing to do. But if Magic Leap has worked out some technology or some new trick to actually create portable daily wear, normal looking glasses that are relatively inexpensive for the masses, holy fuck. Because the issue for so long has been that, you know, even you look at like Google Glass, you look at HoloLens, you look at Meta, basically they just have a tiny little, almost like Pico projector, uh, projecting off a prism and into your eye. Somehow fitting that type of technology where you're trying to project augmented reality overlays on the world into your eye, but through a very, very thin lens and very thin portable glasses is hard. But just for the thought experiment, imagine if by the end of this year for Christmas, Magic Leap actually releases a sub thousand dollar pair of augmented reality glasses that look like normal Ray-Bans, whose battery lasts a good couple of hours. So that could actually kick off this entirely new paradigm of computing um, and actually even, even skip VR. Like VR might be just completely and rapidly overtaken by AR. Think of how rapidly the smartphone paradigm actually reached mass adoption. The first iPhone was only released in 2007. That was nine years ago. Now everyone in society has a smartphone in their pocket. Smartphones today are seen as like boring and kind of blasé. Everyone has one. We've had them for a few years. But, you know, <laughs> you have a supercomputer in your pocket. That actually augments your intelligence and gives you access to the world's information. That same kind of rapid paradigm shift from no one having a smartphone to everyone in society having a smartphone in less than nine years, that same thing is going to happen with AR glasses, but at a much faster rate. Just like everyone has a smartphone in their pocket now, it's absolutely inevitable that within the next couple of years, everyone will have augmented reality smart glasses on their faces at all times. And this paradigm shift will further cement our kind of symbiosis with technology. We're already cyborgs, but this will actually make it even more apparent because it'll augment our intelligence and augment our reality. I've talked before about an augmented reality app store and this would essentially become like an app store for your own reality um, because you could download the app that makes the sky purple or you could download the one that makes lasers. And it's really interesting to think about like what happens when reality itself becomes a personalization option. You can make, you know, trees don't have to be green anymore. They can be whatever. Even things like basic facial recognition, which sounds really scary, but I've always hated it that when you walk down the street past randoms, you don't know each other. So you're all scared. So no one talks to each other. It'd be great if we knew each other's first name and common interests. And really the possibilities are like, like everyone who says you're only limited by your imagination like with augmented reality like it is literally only limited by your imagination you can imagine something and have that overlay 
clearly the internet has absolutely transformed our society globally and yet it's still like this almost like this separate entity you still have to access it through a 2d screen on a phone or computer what augmented reality will do at a mass scale when everyone's wearing these glasses is it, is it will literally merge the two it, it merges reality and the internet you know, intimately and so suddenly your daily life your reality everything in the real world becomes intimately connected and embedded and bathed in information and intelligence. I've probably talked about this before, but the big reason why I want to push humanity and I want humanity to move towards this augmented reality world where everyone's wearing glasses is because of the video camera. Because for augmented reality to work and to display the holograms in the right places, you need a video camera on the front to know what you're looking at to do, to run image recognition to, and to know where to place the holograms. <laughs> and so the cool thing about that is that once this hits mass adoption and everyone's wearing these glasses, everyone will be wearing a HD quality video camera on their forehead constantly. It sounds scary today, but the inevitability of that is that we're going to have 24 seven video recording, life logging, which will be streaming up to the machine. It's kind of like the machine seeing through our eyes because this is what technology wants. It wants information. If we give it access to 7 billion eyeballs, it, it's, it uses that data, it, it learns from it, it becomes us, we merge with it. This process will evolve naturally and organically. You're not gonna suddenly switch to like, okay, now we're all recording 24 seven video. It'll gradually ease in and people will get used to it, so it won't be an issue once it, once it finally arrives. Particularly as things like battery technology gets much better, um, and 5G networks which are being researched and deployed now, as well as like, you'll, you'll probably have to like, um, offload computational processing to the cloud. There will be a tremendous incentive for you to want to stream this data 24-7 up to the machine, because it'll constantly be running machine learning algorithms and image recognition to find problems in your life. So these problems could be as simple as something like, um, like I actually don't know how to tie a tie. So if it, if it was watching me constantly and it saw us trying to tie a tie, it could start displaying augmented reality overlays that take me through that process. Or maybe you're at work and it sees that you're like, you're doing something that you're struggling with or you're, you're not quite as efficient at that particular task and it just helps you guide through that. It becomes a personal assistant, it makes you more productive. Or maybe you're assembling a rocket and it actually shows overlays showing you where to place the pieces, uh, what, what nut to turn, like what to basically do. Or maybe someone's just collapsed on the street and they're having a seizure, um, but you're not a doctor, you have absolutely no medical training, you have no idea what to do. The system automatically recognizes what's happening and guides you through helping that person. And so you can very quickly see how this becomes very similar to like the Matrix scenes where they're just downloading skills, you know, uh, Neo downloads uh, Kung Fu, Trinity downloads how to uh, fly a helicopter. Our IQ and our intelligence will be massively augmented. Um, you know, taking them off will actually reduce your IQ by 300 points or something ridiculous. We'll become gods. But how do you get to this stage where the system can watch what you're doing, understand what problem you're facing, and give you the correct solution? Well, the only way to do that is by gathering data from everyone doing similar things. If you've got the video data feeds from 7 billion eyeballs feeding into this system 24-7 in a constant rate, and it's constantly using machine learning and image recognition to understand what it's looking at, then just for that, say, seizure example, like how do you help someone who's had a seizure on the street, at some point, someone will have a seizure, and someone who is actually medically trained will assist that person. When this global decentralized system of video feeds sees that problem come up over and over again, that someone having a seizure, and then sees the solution, it'll find pattern. Over time, this will mean that every human problem, every problem you ever come across, whether you're consciously aware of that problem or not, there will be an instant solution given to you. And obviously, if you've got like the problem over here and you've got the solution here, you know, the smaller you can make that gap and you can fa the faster you can solve problems on a daily basis, you basically overclock the human species. Just like Google now allows us to tap into the, the, the knowledge of humanity, meaning we don't really have to remember anything anymore, AR will allow us to tap into the skill sets of humanity. When you can tap into the collective skill sets of all of humanity, suddenly you become an expert at everything, and you don't need to know anything because it just overlays. So we become gods, we can solve any problem. Future iterations of these AR glasses will end up having brain activity monitoring built into the sides of the glasses. Then we'll move to contact lenses that do the same thing. Then we'll move to implants. Then the neural lace thing that Elon Musk has talked about, basically brain-computer interface, which would go through the jugular in your vein and then into your brain. Um, and then after that, uh, nanobots that end up wrapping every single neuron in your brain. The collective outcome of all of this is we end up building a global hive mind AI, a global collective intelligence, a global super brain. We become the neurons in the AI. If we're a superorganism right now comprised of trillions of cells and 100 billion neurons that give us this idea of consciousness, we're a collective consciousness ourselves, what happens on a major scale? What type of superorganism do we build when we have the vastness of every single computational resource on the planet paired with 700 quintillion human neurons connected together?